This year, it's all about the new. New decade, new faces, new expectations. And as the Cowboys are on their quest for six, they got the same dream. Where would this team go? There's no limits to what they can accomplish. So with a fresh perspective and a new direction, the 2020 Dallas Cowboys are determined to find greatness. And it all starts this offseason, right here on The Blitz. It's time for another edition of The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we wrap up the month of May and move on to the month of June. And Kyle, if we had a normal offseason going on at the Star in Frisco, the Cowboys would be deep in the heart of organized team activities, but we instead are trying to keep things organized from our home offices. Yeah, it's not normal, Bill, but at the same time, these teams are continuing to, to get their workouts in. They're continuing to keep up with their prospects. And in talking to a couple of the guys throughout the week, it's been efficient. They've been able to keep the contact back and forth, continue to get better and to grow together as a team, even though we're all apart. You know, one position group the Cowboys have to like is the linebacking core as all three starters are back from last year. Of course, Leighton Vander Esch coming off the injury and the next surgery. But you look at the depth chart here and with Jalen Smith in the middle, Leighton Vander Esch at the will and Sean Lee coming back for an 11th season as your Sam linebacker. Uh, there not only is experience there and talent at the linebacking position, Kyle, but also there's some position flexibility for Mike Nolan's defense. Defense. There, de there definitely is some of that flexibility, but whenever you look at the linebackers, even though there's a lot to like there, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of question marks on, on this position as a whole. You look at Leighton Vander Esch specifically, this is a guy who going into 2020 has to prove himself, maybe not as a player, but really as a, a healthy contributing individual. And I think that's kind of the, the biggest thing because you could argue last year, Leighton Vander Esch was the biggest missing key to that 2019 Cowboys defense. Whenever he goes out of the game, it, it really puts an extra chip on the shoulder of a guy like Sean Lee or Jalen Smith. And even though Jalen Smith and Sean Lee played admirably throughout the back half of the season, whenever Leighton Vander Esch is in the game, he makes you better. His ability to cover, his ability to come up and make a play, each kind of balance each other out. They make both of the linebackers around them better and especially with the additions on this defensive line that could help out the linebackers there's a ton of pressure on this position as a whole yeah i think when you look at uh, leighton vander esch it's going to really uh, help him out is having the big guys up front on terry poe as well as gerald mccoy and then when you look at jalen smith in the middle what I've always liked about Jalen is his ability not only to play middle linebacker, but also to rush the passer. And I think in this defense, uh, if, if, he, if Mike Nolan's going to go with more of a hybrid defense on third down and maybe some other downs, you might see Jalen Smith being used in ways that really uh, uses his ability even better. I'm excited to see what Jalen Smith has as a pass rusher off of the edge if we do end up seeing that hybrid look, which I think we will. Mike Nolan's been very adamant about showing multiple looks coming up in 2020. And I think overall, Jalen Smith is just better when he's running downhill. Whenever he has a chance to be a headhunter, to be able to put his foot in the ground and go and make a play, that's whenever he's better. Not necessarily being timid, backing up in coverage. You look at his stats last year, tied for second, amongst all linebackers in the NFL in tackles and he's just an elite run defender he plugs holes he goes up and makes a play in the pass rush I think if you're able to put him downhill it's going to benefit him and everyone around him and it's, it's good having Sean Lee back for another season. Of course, there have been injury issues throughout Lee's career, but also for Leighton Vander Esch and Jalen Smith coming out of college at Notre Dame. But just having that veteran influence and the way Sean Lee played at the end of the season, if he can take up where he left off at the end of the year, I think he can have another good year. No doubt. Uh, don't forget about Sean Lee. You saw that he had some left in the tank, especially in week 15 against the Rams. And then he had an 11 tackle game against Philadelphia a week later on the road in prime time setting to try and find a way to get to the playoffs. Unfortunately, we know how that turned out. But Sean Lee did show he still has a lot left. He comes and he contributes not only in between the ears of all of the defenders around him and just as a guy you want on your sideline and in your locker room, but as a guy who can go out and make plays on the field. I expect him to do much of the same this season. 
And, and as far as depth at the linebacker position, the veterans are back in Joe Thomas and Justin March. And second year for Luke Gifford might be interesting as well. We're just getting started on this edition of The Blitz. When we come back in just a moment, we turn our attention to one of those new playmakers on offense. Yes, C.D. Lamb. And how do the numbers add up for him in his rookie season? The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. Last year, he was an absolute beast. Gosh, like, you are an animal. This guy is, okay, there's a lot of great receivers in the country. He's right there. Look at this. C.D. Lamb, he's got breakaway speed. Deep throw, wide open. C.D. Lamb, it's already his night. Cowboys first round draft pick C.D. Lamb was a first team All-American at Oklahoma, but what kind of impact will he make here with the Cowboys as we welcome you back to the Blitz and we welcome in David Hellman, who takes an up close look at C.D. Lamb's possible impact on this team. Thanks, y'all. All right. I want to take a second to apologize at the very outset of this segment because I'm going to do math. And as any teacher I've ever had in my life can attest, that's typically a very bad idea, but in looking at C.D. Lamb and the impact that we think he can have on this Cowboys offense, you kind of got to throw some numbers around. And, and it seems like a question that I've gotten a lot since the NFL draft is what type of impact can you expect from C.D. Lamb in year one? So I basically just looked at recent history with Dak Prescott's time as the Cowboys starting quarterback to get an idea of how many times is this guy going to touch the ball in his rookie season? So just take it back over the last couple of years. Dak Prescott, for the vast majority of his career, has fluctuated somewhere between 500 and 590 attempts per season. He threw 590 last year. We'll average it out at 560 for the coming season. 560 attempts on the year out of about 1,000 snaps. Let's say, average out his completion percentage, let's say he's going to complete 67% of those Seems like a reasonable average. It's right in between what he's done the last two years. So Dak Prescott is going to throw roughly 360 completions in the 2020 season, hopefully. You can count on Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup to account for roughly half of that. Amari's averaged 80 or so per season since joining the Cowboys. Michael Gallup had 66 last year. Dude's a baller. I think it's fair to think he can improve that. So we'll say 150 completions to your top two receivers. Blake Jarwin, let's go ahead and double his uh, reception count because we're going to likely double his snap count in 2020. That's 60 catches for Blake. Again, sorry for the math, but doing a little bit of, of that math, you take those three guys away, it leaves you with about 163 catches left for everybody else. Don't forget about Ezekiel Elliott. Let's say he averages between 45 and 55 uh, receptions a season. He did have 77 in 2018, although that seems like a little bit of an outlier. So we'll give Zeke 50. It leaves you with 113 receptions for the rest of the Cowboys offense. Now this is where the fluctuation kind of begins, makes it a little bit interesting. You go back over Dak Prescott's career. He has thrown an average of 79 passes to non-starters in his offense, but it always depends a little bit on his supporting cast. Huge outlier, the 2018 season, he threw 128 passes to non-starters. But you think about the way that season started, receiver by committee, not a true number one receiver, makes a lot of sense. Now go back to 2016, when he had the bona fide starting trio of Des Bryant, Terrence Williams, and Cole Beasley, he only threw 55 passes to non-starting receivers. Now why do I bring this up? Obviously because the talent of your starting cast is going to dictate what everybody else gets. So I think it's fair to say 79 is not the true average. I would guess Dak throws between 50 and 60 passes to non-starters, which obviously you do a little bit of math, let's say, you know, 113 receptions minus the 60. You're talking about as many as 70 receptions left over for a guy like C.D. Lamb. I think the absolute floor is 
40, 45 catches. Uh, but even that seems a little bit low. Randall Cobb caught 55 as this team's starting slot receiver last year. I think you're talking about anywhere from 45 to 65 as a reasonable guess uh, for reception uh, count for C.D. Lamb as a rookie. Don't forget about his returnability. We don't know if he'll actually do it in games, but if he does, the Cowboys have averaged roughly 26 punt returns per season over the last four years. That's another 15 to 20 touches for C.D. right there. I would imagine it's fairly easy for the Cowboys to get this guy maybe as much as 80 touches as a rookie, and that's something everybody should be really excited about. Back to y'all. Can't wait to see how things add up for C.D. Lamb in his first year for the Cowboys. Coming up next here on The Blitz, what kind of impact will Ha Ha make on the Cowboys secondary? An up-close look. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. The Blitz continues now. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we take a look at uh, the back end of the Cowboys defense, the safety position. Some changes back there. A new face back there who is a veteran face. Ha ha Clinton Dix, a former first round draft pick of Mike McCarthy's Packers some six years ago. Jeff Heath has moved on to the Las Vegas Raiders. Xavier Woods is back. But Kyle, how about we talk with the new guy back there. Ha ha Clinton Dix and uh, what kind of impact that he might have have on this Cowboys secondary. He's been well-traveled the last couple of years in the NFL. He's been well-traveled, but I think this is one of the more underrated signings that the Cowboys have made throughout the course of the offseason. This is uh, a veteran who comes in. He's still 27 years old. He's got a lot left uh, in terms of his career and what he brings to the table with the defense. He's reunited with Mike McCarthy where he had the most success up in Green Bay, but he brings consistency. He's not going to come in and make the spectacular play or blow up a defense or excuse me, blow up an offense, but there's a lot of things that he can do in that strong safety spot that are going to benefit you. He's great in coverage. He's going to have some range going sideline to sideline if you really need him to. I think he's just one of those right place, right time sort of individuals. And whenever you don't have a guy like Jeff Heath who's out there headhunting, that's kind of what I want. I want a guy who's going to come in and cover. And I think HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix brings that to the table. And of course, HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix in his career has 16 interceptions, had a couple last year with the Chicago Bears. Let's move over to the other starting safety coming back, Xavier Woods, now going into his fourth season. A lot of people talk about you go into your third year, now you're settled into the league. Now it's, he's going into his contract year, so it uh, needs to be a big year for Xavier Woods personally this year. It's a contract year, but mark my words, I think this is going to be a breakout year for Xavier Woods because I think he benefits as much as anybody of having a guy like HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix to learn from and to see how a veteran safety makes it through an NFL season. Now, he has had Jeff Heath in the past, but I think Xavier Woods gets a step up from playing next to Clinton Dix. And then also not to mention, he's gotten better every single year. Really, from his sixth round selection a couple years ago out of Louisiana Tech, he continues to get better. He he was better at the end of the year last year than he was at the beginning. I think that uh, ascension continues, and I think it's actually rapid uh, compared to what it has been in the past. And I think he's going to come in and make a legitimate impact. And the Cowboys have a couple of other options at uh, safety. Darian Thompson, when Woods was out early in the season last year, started for him. In fact, he made four starts in all last year. He was a high draft pick uh, several years ago. And then Donovan Wilson out of Texas A&M. There's a couple other guys who could be wild cards back there at safety. And I think it's about time we give Donovan Wilson uh, an opportunity that he hasn't necessarily had in the past. I mean, this is a guy who only had 16 snaps at safety last year. The majority of his time came on special teams. He was a third round pick in 2016, flashed some ability whenever he had some chances on the field, but you haven't necessarily given him enough opportunity to really see whether or not he can he can swim or, or whatever is going to end up happening with him. So I think uh, at safety, Donovan Wilson needs to see really an opportunity opportunity and maybe even some more playing time. 
Yep, and uh, there's a couple of other guys to keep an eye on, including the veteran Daryl Worley, who has some experience at safety in his career. In fact, just last year with the Raiders. And one of those rookies, too, Reggie Robinson the second. But up next here on the Blitz, let's take a look at another one of those rookies who could make an impact his first year in the league, a guy the Cowboys traded up for on draft day. Welcome back into the Blitz, the Dallas Cowboys report. Kyle Yeomans with Bill Jones. And if there's one person that is used to working from home, it's Tyler Biotish, the 2020 NFL draft pick and the center out of Wisconsin, now a Dallas Cowboy who grew up working on his grandfather's farm in Wisconsin, helped grow a love for football, helped grow a work ethic that ended up helping Biotish get to the NFL. I would say untraditional as um, what you were told what was going to happen and then what is actually happening. Like most things in our world today, Tyler Biotish's transition into the NFL has been thrown a bit out of whack. You know, it's definitely been still a great experience. The six foot three center was selected by the Dallas Cowboys in the fourth round of the NFL draft, a Wisconsin native who is no stranger to unconventional beginnings. At least this time, he knows which side of the football he's on, unlike his start with the Badgers. I really didn't know whether I was going to play defense or offense. And, um, you know, I, I came in and it was day one and saw my locker and it had 61 on it with knee braces and, you know, a whole line of shoes. And I was like, okay, here we go. It's safe to say that things worked out for the best on the offensive line as Biotis took home the school's first Remington Trophy, given to the nation's top center and becoming an All-American, despite his defensive coach's best efforts. My defensive coordinator told me, like, um, Two years down the road, he's like, yeah, I tried getting you back on defense, but Coach Ruff wouldn't let me, <laughs> so. But now that Biotish has taken the leap into the NFL, he realizes how crucial this offseason is and looks forward to the challenge and opportunity that these next few months bring. The coaching staff has done a great job of connecting with all of us players, too, on the team and everything like that, and it's, um, it's actually been really nice. I'm, at, I'm fortunate enough that I have a lot of um, facilities around me that are like available to um, actually go work out and run and everything for me. He spends every day taking advantage of his blessings by embracing a single word. Effort. How much How much effort are you going to put in the playbook? And um, how much are you going to know? And, and that's really, I think, a lot of tests for a lot of rookies right now. Because it's like, if we're, 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 we're not going to have a lot of time, probably, to come back. You, you know, you got you to gotta almost prepare for the worst. I thought I maximized a lot of my opportunities. Um, and it definitely developed into the person I am today. Biotis looks to make an impact and replace Travis Frederick potentially for that starting center spot come training camp, but he's got a long way to go if he's going to pass guys like Joe Looney and Connor McGovern, who are also fighting for that spot. When we return, we'll talk about another addition to the Dallas Cowboys this offseason, Alden Smith, as we wrap up this edition of the Blitz. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Final couple of minutes of the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans as we wrap up the month of May. We turn our attention to the month of June, which usually is a pretty busy month when we have a normal offseason because of OTAs, at the Star in Frisco, a mini camp as well. It remains to be seen what's going to happen as far as when these, this team and all the coaches are going to be able to get back with the players. But during the virtual offseason program, Kyle, uh, this past week, one of the new faces to join the team, Alden Smith, just days after being reinstated by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. He's, got, he's been fitted for his shoulder pads and helmet, and he had his physical, and he's raring to go. And in talking to the media this week, Bill, uh, he's just one of those guys you want to cheer for with a star on the side of his helmet because if he's even an inkling of what he was during his time with the 49ers, then all of a sudden you've got an impact player opposite of Demarcus Lawrence, and it's a ton of fun. He talked about his relationship with his grandma and how he's kind of turned his life around. It's really exciting because it's on the field, off the field, an impact being made in a player's life, and I think it's something absolutely any football fan should cheer for. 
You know, uh, Mike McCarthy, Cowboys head coach, also talked in a conference call with the media earlier in the week. He talked about, he, yeah, he's ready to get back at it. He joked that his family is ready for him to get back at it. I think we're all ready to get back at it at the Star in Frisco, and perhaps it'll happen fairly soon. Hopefully it will. I, I'm excited to get back at the Star with you, Bill. I think by the time I'm ready to go to get back and just work in studio again. Well, and right now we are at 52 days away from, from when the Cowboys should be departing for training camp in Oxnard, California. We'll be seeing in the coming days whether they will have camp there or in Frisco. We will wrap it all up for you next week on our next edition of The Blitz.